Hey y'all, so I'm braiding my hair. I am just about done, I'm gonna find the stretch. And I haven't had braids in almost exactly eight years since I've been natural. I've done goddess locks, I've done Marley twists, but no box braids. And I remember exactly when I had box braids because I did box braids to transition for my big chop. Before I did my big chop, I wore a pixie cut for about, I wanna say about five years. And when I decided that I wanted to do the big chop, I box braided my hair just like this. Make sure y'all watch my box braid tutorial because I'll show you guys a little bit of me braiding my hair right now, but this is not a tutorial. This is more of a chit chat video. So I braided my hair and I kept the braids in for about four months, refreshing them in between in order for my hair to be long enough to do a big chop and cut it off. And since it's been almost exactly eight years since I took out those braids, I took out my braids and did my big chop on January 30th, 2015. So it's just about my eighth natural hair anniversary. And I figured that this is a good time to tell you guys about my big chop story and reflect a little bit on my natural hair journey. So I was one of those people that swore I never chopped my hair off to the big chop and go natural. I absolutely loved my pixie cut. It was so me, it was so dope. But health reasons ended up making me chop off my hair and do the big chop. So I was finding that my hair, the crown of my head was very itchy, like extremely itchy. And I used to scratch until I scratched bald spots in the middle of my head. But I had no clue that I had bald spots because my hair is very thick. Even when it was relaxed, it was still extremely thick. So I could never see the spots. But what happened is I would feel the spots in my head. So I ended up going to the doctor to get some blood work done and stuff. And come to find out, I was having issues with my thyroid. I have this thyroid disorder called Hashimoto's. And what happens is your body attacks your thyroid because it thinks it's a foreign object. It thinks it doesn't belong. And I had my thyroid checked years before. However, my doctor had only checked my levels and my levels were fine. So she assumed there was just nothing wrong with my thyroid. That doctor ended up switching hospitals and I had to find a new doctor. And when I found the new doctor, although it was my primary doctor, his specialty was endocrinology. And since I was over 30, he decided to do a full workup, including a thyroid workup and a thyroid sonogram. And what he found was my thyroid was enlarged and my antibodies, he tested for these antibodies that check to see if you have Hashimoto's, if your body's attacking your thyroid and my antibody levels was high. I didn't have to go on any medication because my thyroid was working fine, but I would have to get my numbers checked like every couple of months because Hashimoto's can eventually lead to hypothyroidism where your thyroid under functions and you'll need to take medicine in order to help with the function. And some of the symptoms is um, harder to lose weight. You can be overweight, you can lose hair, mood swings, a whole bunch of symptoms. But the thing is, although my thyroid levels was fine, the doctors assumed that since I just had Hashimoto's, you know, everything was fine. I just had to get my levels checked, but no. The symptoms of my hair, my scalp itching, and my hair thinning in the middle, was symptoms of a thyroid disorder. So what I ended up doing was saying, I'm gonna stop relaxing my hair because I felt the relaxer was exacerbating the issue with me having the itchy scalp and the crown of my hair falling out. So I decided to do the big chop. So we're gonna fast forward a little bit. After I did the big chop, 
and started wearing my hair natural and no more relaxes, I stopped having the issues with the itching in the crown. So these days, the crown of my hair only like itches if my hair gets too dry and that's an indication that like since you need to moisturize your scalp or wash your hair, but it's not the severe itching like bugs was in my scalp like it was when I was relaxing. So it was a combination of the thyroid disorder and the relaxer that was giving my hair issues. So anyway, I decided to do the big chop. And like I said, I braided my hair up and I left those braids for about four months. And I was supposed to wait until the weekend, but I was just like a little impatient. It was like the middle of the week. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take these braids out and I'm just going to go ahead and chop off my hair because I'm ready. Right? So when I was relaxed, I would use... A lie relaxer and I know people say no lie but what I found was the lie relaxer would keep my hair more moisturized and it would last longer and when I used no lie relaxer my hair was very dry and breaking so I ended up switching to a lie relaxer and I was able to keep my relaxer stored in the fridge I didn't have to throw it away after mixing it up because it was already pre-mixed. So that was important to me because when you have a pixie cut, what happens is the nape of your neck gets peasy before the rest of your hair does. So I had to touch up the back of my hair more often than I had to relax my whole head. So I threw my little relaxer in the garbage. I'm like, I'm not going to need this no more. I'm about to do my big chop. I'm going to love my hair. So I take out my braids, I get ready to do my big chop. Y'all, I chop my hair off and I looked in the mirror and I was like, yo, what did you do? I absolutely hated it. I thought I looked like somebody's grandpa, not grandma, grandpa. Like it, it just wasn't cute to me. And I went in the kitchen and I dug in the garbage and I took the relaxer out of that garbage because I was like, no. You can't do this. So you go and relax your hair. Yeah, you still have enough hair that you can have a little short pixie cut. Because with my pixie cut, sometimes I used to go super duper short. And then sometimes I used to let it grow out longer, do my little swoop bang. But I'm like, yeah, you could just relax it and, you know, do your little pixie cut. Then I was like, no. You made this decision. You're going to stick to it. And you're going to wear your natural hair. You're going to learn to love it. You're going to learn to take care of it. So what I did, I did a wash and go. I started Googling natural hairstyles, like what am I supposed to do at this point? And I found some videos of people using a brush. And I had a boar's bristle brush. So I washed my hair and I remember putting some leave-in conditioner and some gel. And I used a boar's bristle brush. <laughs> boar's bristle brush. Say that three times real fast. <laughs> to create some coils and it was like four o'clock in the morning at this point I had to go to work so I went to sleep for a little bit and the next day I had to go to work and I remember taking a selfie and posting it on Instagram with the date saying you know change and I put on my hoops and I went to work and the response on Instagram was crazy like so many people loved my hair like they loved it omg i can't believe you did it it looks so good and i still didn't like it i had styled my hair did my little makeup put on my hoops i was not feeling it i went to work i was nervous about it everybody there loved my hair as well and i still wasn't feeling it so I started looking up some pictures of natural haircuts that had like a little short fro. And I was like, you know what? I want a taper cut. Maybe a taper cut will make me like my hair more. And um, although I cut my own hair while it was relaxed, I used to cut and style my own hair where I had a pixie as well. I wasn't comfortable taking the clippers and trying to cut my natural hair into a taper cut because I thought I was just going to mess it up. So I found this picture of the style I like, and I took it to the barber that would occasionally line me up before I started cutting my own hair. And he used to be my son's barber when he was little. So I take him the picture, and I tell him this is what I want. And y'all probably know the story. I did not get what I want. My hair didn't look anything like the picture. I actually had to come home and take my clippers and try to go in and fix it a little bit 
after that, that's how I started cutting my own hair because when that tapered cut grew out and I needed to reshape it, I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to taper my own hair. And the first time I did it, it wasn't very precise, but once I like washed my hair and wore it curly, it looks good. So I continued styling my hair in this little wash and go style with the brush. But I wanted to try different looks. And what I found when looking up styles was that I didn't see a lot of people with hair like mine, like type 4, 4C texture, kinky hair. I was finding these cute styles, but everybody's hair was like a looser texture. And my hair didn't curl like that. And it was frustrating me more and making me not like my hair and even more because I'm like, why doesn't my hair look like, you know, these other girls' hair? Like, I want my hair to look like that. And also, when you first do a big chop, it's like your hair goes into some kind of shock. Like, my hair was, I want to say like a Brillo pad. Like, it was on the hard and crispy side, no matter how much I moisturized it. I didn't have any curl definition, and I just thought that's how my hair was going to look. And it wasn't going to get any better, and I was not happy with that. Like, I wanted curls. I wanted these nice, pretty curls that I saw other girls with. That was my mindset back then. But then also, I wanted to learn how to style my hair in different ways. So that is how I ended up doing hair tutorials for you guys because there was nothing there for me. Yes, I saw tutorials for the styles that I wanted, but it was nothing there for me where I can see girls whose hair look exactly like mine. Well, not exactly because nobody's two textures are exactly alike, but similar to mine where it can give me inspiration. So I started trying these different styles on my own hair and recording it for you guys as a resource for 4C hair so that you guys can see how this sound. I'm saying you guys because a lot of you guys have been here since then, even though some of you guys are new. And a lot of you new guys are, you know, subscribed because you're looking for hair tutorials. So I recorded these videos in the hopes of like helping you guys with your 4C hair, styling it, and to learn to love your hair, right? So that's how I started doing the natural hair tutorials. So as I'm starting to fil film these tutorials, I started noticing a difference in my hair. And what was happening was the shock was over. And as I'm doing these different styles, I started noticing, hey, my hair is curly too. It didn't look exactly like, you know, the girls in those tutorials here that I thought my hair would look like and wanted my hair to look like. It was a different kind of curls or coils what I found out later, <laughs> they're called tight springy coils. And I'm like, okay, it don't look like that, but this is my curls and I'm gonna learn to love it. And I started liking my natural hair. I started styling it and I saw my own curl definition and I learned to appreciate and love my natural hair for my texture and not want it to look like anybody else's hair. And that was important on my natural hair journey because that's the only way I was able to stick to it. If I didn't learn to love my hair, I would have ended up relaxing again, even though it wasn't healthy for my hair. I wanted to love my hair. I wanted to love the styles I was doing. And when I started loving my hair and I was able to style my hair like really well, that's why I continue to post tutorials on my channel because I know the hard time that I had when I initially chopped my hair off and I didn't have any help. I had to figure out how to style my hair, what products work for my hair. And that was an expensive time for me because when I first started doing these videos, brands wasn't sending me products and natural hair products are extremely expensive so i'm sitting there buying all of this stuff which a large majority of it didn't work what happened was i found one or two products that worked for me and then i would stick to it i didn't start trying more products until brands start recognizing me for my natural hair videos and actually sending me products to try out and doing sponsored content so that's one thing yes you may see a lot of us influences 
posted all these different brands and different hair products, but I find once you find the products that work for your hair, stick to it. There's no need to keep bouncing around and buying everything that we suggest to you guys. And you may think it's crazy for me telling you this, but it's the truth because yes, I do try different products when brands send me stuff and I may find some new stuff that I love, but I have my tried and true products that I love and I use regularly, especially like when I'm doing my washing goals. But yeah, it was important to find products that work for my hair. It was important to figure out what my hair liked and did in light one thing is not washing it too much I thought I had to wash my hair every day in the shower no if I wash my hair every day in the shower it was dry like a Brillo pad again first I would wash it every week and now most of the time I wash it every 10 to 14 days and that's fine for me I don't have to put itchy scalp or anything anymore so I can go 10 to 14 days everybody's hair is different for you you might find you need to wash every couple of days or whatnot but that's just some of the things I've learned on my natural hair journey. Now, until this day, I still get so many questions in the comments on these videos, on my Instagram, on my blog of women with 4C hair asking how to manage their hair. What products should they use? They follow my tutorials and their hair doesn't look exactly like mine and they're wondering what they're doing wrong. Why don't their hair look like mine? And I'm realizing that a lot of these people are exactly where I was on my natural hair journey, where in the beginning, I had no clue what I was doing. I didn't know my hair. I was trying to figure out my hair. I was trying to figure out how to style it. And I didn't have help, much help online. Now, that's why I'm so happy that, you know, I did all these hair tutorials and I'm not quitting y'all. I plan to continue to do more hair tutorials, but I'm glad that... I can serve as a resource for people doing a big chop or, you know, venturing into the tapered cut style and just, you know, with similar textures to me. Like I say I'm 4C, but I actually have multiple textures in my hair, all type 4, but the back of my hair has very loose loose curls where it is probably like a 4A, then I have some 4B mixed in there, and then like the majority 4C, which a lot of us have. I don't think any of us have like one texture all throughout our whole entire head. Many of us do have like mixed textures in our head, which can make things even more complicated. But predominantly 4C hair, type 4 hair, which we don't get enough representation and love as everybody else does, the other hair type. So it's important that there's information available and information exchange in the natural hair community to help us out. So now, it's been eight years and I've learned so much. But the biggest thing that I've learned is to love my hair for what it is and not expect it to look like anybody else's. And also to wear the styles that I want and style my hair the way I want it. Like I've been wearing a tapered cut my whole natural hair journey. Sometimes a longer tapered cut, like in the first year, I let it get really long. That's the longest I've ever let it get. And I've done, chopped it off. I done lost count how many times I've done the big chop now. It's been probably at least four or five times and I'll chop it all off and start all over. And it doesn't bother me at all to just chop off my hair and start all over. Like, it doesn't matter. It's just hair. And me being able to say that is growth for me. It's just hair. Because when I was younger, my mom relaxed my hair when I was like nine years old. And I had a relaxing my whole life, so I had no clue what my natural hair looked like. And when I was younger, my mom didn't know how to take care of relaxed hair, so my hair broke off really bad. And I didn't know what I was doing. And it wasn't until I was a teenager and I started braiding my hair. That was the, for the first time I braided my own hair 
was when I was 12 years old and I got really good at it and that was my job through junior high school and high school. I used to braid hair. Females, males, everybody, that was my job. But I got really good at braiding hair and taking care of my own hair. And that's when my hair started to flourish and grow. And then when I was in high school, I started going to the Dominican salon and get my relaxes and my washing sets and my hair grew really long and I learned how to maintain the styles at home as well. And that was my first time having long hair in my life because when I was younger I didn't have long hair it was always short and broken off because nobody knew what to do with it either relaxing it too much and then running a hot comb through it with the relaxed sun then braiding it up it was a mess so when I was like late teens young adult that's when my hair was flourishing and I remember when I was pregnant with my son I was 19 turning 20 and my hair grew so long like it was long and thick and after I had my son, like I cut it a little shorter, like I had cut my hair like to my shoulders or like to my lower neck and I had bangs and it was so thick that it looked like a wig and it just grew back so fast. And I remember when I was turning 21, I'm like, I look so young and I have this baby and I want to look grown up. So I'm going to chop my hair off. And that was the first time I chopped my hair off into a pixie cut. And everybody thought I was crazy because my hair had grew so long and I always wanted my hair long, but I didn't care about hair. I chopped it off with no problem and everyone had a problem with me chopping my hair but me. That was growth. All my life, all I wanted was long hair. When I got the long hair, I chopped it off. And from that point on in my life, when it came down to hair and chopping off my hair and worrying about my hair, I never looked back. Like I let my hair grow back again after that and then... When I was about maybe 27, that's when I chopped my hair off and did a pixie cut again. And I wore that pixie cut until I did the big chop. So short hair was natural for me. That was my style. After one long hair all my life, when I finally achieved it and knew that I could achieve it, it's like, okay, I cut my hair off whenever I want because now I know that it's just hair and it will grow right back if you take care of it. So technically I've learned that while I was relaxed, but it's something that I've stuck to and realized with my natural hair as well. It's just hair. People get so obsessed with my hair when I let it grow out and then I chop it off. Oh my goodness, I can't believe you chopped off all that beautiful hair. Yada, 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 yada. It's just here, y'all. It's going to grow back. So right now, I'm actually letting my hair grow out until longer taper cut. I don't see myself anytime soon like just having like a full on fro. But I'm letting it grow out until a longer tapered cut. So that's why I'm braiding it up. And not only that, I need a break. Like I'm going to be extremely busy the next couple of months. So I just need to have my hair braided up and take a break so I can do the things that I need to do and not have to worry about my hair. I also want to grow up my hair a little longer so I can get a little more creative and try different styles, like maybe even a ponytail, and that mean more tutorials for you guys. Now, don't get mad if y'all see me take out these braids and chop all my hair off because I do that. I go back and forth. Right now, I'm saying, you know what? I want to grow my hair out longer. Then by the time I take these braids out, I might be like, no. I want to cut it all off. Hey, I might say I want to get a dark Caesar, but that's what you do when you love your hair, when you learn to love your hair, no matter what its state, no matter what its texture, no matter what length it is, it doesn't matter. You try new things, you do different things, and I'm so glad that I've learned that on my natural hair journey to just do what I want with my hair as long as I'm taking care of it and it's healthy and to be creative because that's what makes this natural hair journey fun. But it's been a journey. I cannot believe it's been eight years already. It feel like it was yesterday. And I have no intentions of relaxing my hair again, but I just want to be more creative with my hair. And I'm actually glad to be doing these box braids and having a protective style so I can take a little break and have more time to do the things that I need to do even though my hair doesn't really take away from the time I need to do things because I don't bother with my hair too much I usually style it leave it for two weeks and style it again 
But sometimes when it's time to style it, I'm so busy, I don't feel like doing it, and I end up wearing that hat for a whole week. And I don't care. <laughs> that don't bother me. I can wear a hat to work, so it's whatever. But that is my natural hair journey. The story behind my big chop. I really don't think I've ever shared that story with you guys. And if I had to do this all over again, I would. Because technically, with so many big chops, I done started over and over and over again. And... I learned something new about my hair every time. So I'm still enjoying my natural hair journey. I'm still enjoying my natural hair. I'm learning that it's okay to take breaks and do protective styles. Hence me doing this protective style right now. I'm on a final stretch, y'all. And by the time I finished, it took me about 14 hours to do my hair. My braids are very long. They're like to my booty. Actually, they're past my booty. And y'all ain't gonna be able to tell me nothing. When I'm finished braiding my hair, I'm gonna tip my eyebrows. I think I might even change my nose ring into a hoop. And yes, it's gonna be like, hey, new hair, who this? If you're just starting out on your natural hair journey, the best advice that I can give you that I wish somebody gave me is to learn to love your hair for your hair. Your hair is unique, it's different, it's not going to look like anyone else's. Even if you feel you have the same texture, your hair is going to look different. You can follow my tutorial to a T and your hair may not come out looking exactly like mine. And that's okay because our hair is different. Your hair is unique to you. My hair is unique to me. So learn how to love your hair for your hair. And from there, You'll be able to learn how to manage your hair. You'll be able to learn what your hair likes and what it don't like. You'll be able to learn to love your hair. And that will make your natural hair journey so much easier. And also, don't forget, it's okay to wear protective styles. You don't have to wear your hair out 24-7 if you don't want to or you don't feel like it. Because sometimes it gets tiring styling your natural hair. Trust me, I know. You see, I'm taking a break right now. But yes, just love your hair for your hair. And don't try to make your hair look like anyone else's or feel like your hair is not pretty because it doesn't look like somebody else's hair because your hair is unique. Is yours. Love what's on your head. And as you guys can see, I am finally finished my box braids. Ooh, yes, it took like 14 hours, but I am done. I'm about to go eat. Well, first I got to dip these ends because, yes, these ends need to be dipped. This is how long the braids are. But, yeah, I need to dip these ends. And I'm going to eat and finish primping and then enjoy the rest of my night. I hope you guys enjoyed this little natural hair chit chat. If you have any questions for me, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll try to get through all of them. And I will see you guys next time.